We have a lot going on today. Uh, announcements to start. Communion is today. You'll see up here. After the service, up here. Um, the civics group, Diane McKinney's group, meets tonight. And so see her for a, a Zoom link. Uh, the Tuesday group meets this week at 10 o'clock. Um, and I want to thank everybody who worked on the bazaar. We have a mini bazaar, and we had fun. We cleaned out our closets, and we made some money. So uh, we thank Diane particularly for for, uh, for organizing and, and leading us and telling us what to do. <laughs> and we are, as you can see, we are collecting food for an Afghan refugee family. Uh, the list of the food items they need is in the bulletin. The family is in dire need. And Jay will tell you more about them. Uh, he, the, the deadline to have the food here was today, but Jay says they're close and he could take, keep taking food up to them if you want to keep giving food. Or And of course, gift cards are always welcome. Um,
up for food, okay? So here's what we need, and uh, thank you, Jimmy, I'll just leave this. Uh, if you're requested to volunteer to bring something, and if you're planning to come, we request to communicate your name, well, just, just so I know who it is, so I can talk to you if, if I have to change something, okay? But just one name of your group, and how many people, and if you're bringing maybe four people, you should possibly consider bringing two things, okay? And they don't have to be big. Uh, we have several categories. We just don't want to have like 10 pies and no stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, if you contribute something to the meal, you can also email me at peggy925 at comcast.net and put your program there, okay? And if you just would put North Great Turkey, then I'll just find all those together and figure out who's offering you and what. So, essentially, we think about turkey, ham, pies, desserts, vegetable dishes, salads, breads, and rolls, cranberry sauce, relish, uh, mashed potatoes, beans, and the like. I think we've even had wine, you know? So, if people want to bring that, I think that's all right. Um, we right now have two turkeys, uh, three potato dishes, two salad dishes, and, um, and I think that's about it. So, if you're interested, oh, three types of potatoes, I said that. Um, so if you're interested in any of those categories, you might want to think of another one, you know, just, just so we don't have too many, too many things. All right, that's all I have to say, and um, I will be floating around in the coffee hour, too, if you want to meet me and just tell me what to bring. If you have to change it, or don't worry, it's not the end of the day. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Good morning. I'm reminded of the Academy Awards where people in these long gowns stumble up the stairs. <laughs> Peggy stumbles down the stairs. So I'm glad you're okay. Okay. Good morning again. Uh, this is the day after the bazaar, which was an amazing success, I think. Lots of just good energy. Many people came through. So it had a, a wonderful feeling. And then to be next to all this food that you have brought in, for the Afghan family also just feels really beautiful. And the perfect visual, I think, to begin stewardship. Because stewardship is not only the care of this building and our own community, but I would love to think of stewardship in terms of our mission also, that we are stewards of gifts that we share with people beyond this community. And at this point, we're doing that very specifically with the family in Pittsburgh the Afghan family. So thank you for all that you have given. And as Kathy said, you can keep giving. Um, the family <clears throat> is in a position where the father is not able to be employed yet because he's not gone through all the legalities of being able to <clears throat> be permitted to work. And so at this point, they are very dependent upon people being able to support them and help them until they get to a point hopefully in the new year, where they will be able to be employed and sustain themselves. So we begin by looking at our capacity for stewardship. The way that we have received incredible gifts and the way that we are called to gift others. And so we begin by celebrating the morning with the opening hymn, Morning Has Broken, in the silver hymnal, number 38. If you are able, please rise. Praise 
praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where God's feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one night, Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. Our call to worship this in the silver hymnal number 473, very simple words that simply call us to the reality that part of what we are about as a community, as a church, is a group of people who are called to help each other and help those in need. So please join me in these words. Love, Love is the spirit, spirit of, of this church, church and service its law. This, this is our great, great covenant, covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Praise God, the love we all may share. Praise God, the beauty everywhere. Praise God, the hope of good to me. Praise God, truth that makes us free. Amen. The Lord's Prayer this morning, translated through the heart and mind of Barbara Hill. Please join me. O creator of all matter, whose sacred name is unknowable, May we build a community on earth in accordance with your intentions for the universe. Grant us the ability to feed ourselves sustainably and overlook our faults as we must learn to overlook the faults of others. Lead us away from all that is unwholesome and divert us from all that is destructive. For all creation, its power and its beauty, are yours from infinity to infinity. Amen. Spirit of life, come unto me. Sing in our hearts all the stirrings of compassion. Blow in the the shape of justice roots hold me close wings set me free spirit of life come to me come to me you may be seated
refugees in Ukraine. Judy often said during the meditation, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. When I hear that phrase, I ponder what does it really mean? Suzanne Straw, one of our silent church members, annually knits 100 wool caps for the homeless and make them a part of our options Christmas package. She out of blue skies call me, says there is an Afghan refugee family of three, including a little girl three years old, are in extreme, extreme need for the food, shelter, and transportation. The church council agreed to help this family within our capability, and the result is, as you know, the food drive, to which many of you have, many of you have contributed. Now, Suzanne is knitting caps for the homeless, and you all are contributing food and gift cards to the refugee family. Aren't they our contribution to making peace on earth and let it begin with you and me? Thank you very much. Now, as for the stewardship, contributing time, energy, and money all help North Bray to thrive and that could result in helping our community contribute toward peace. But when discussing about pledging, pledging, I often hear our members and friends ask, how big a pledge should we sign up for? So I thought I'll share with you what Sarah and I go through each year as to how to complete our pledge card. We simply use five steps to do the math. Step one, take out our last year's tax return. Step two, adjust the income according to what has happened this year, so far, since this year hasn't completed yet. Step three, subtract federal and state income tax. After all, we pay income tax to help with others. I figure that's part of our contribution also. Step four, then take 10% of the remainder. And step five, divide that 10% into half and pledge that to this church. That's how we do it. Simple, isn't it? So I hope our approach will help you do your calculations. By the way, in terms of our refugee family, some of you who were here for the bazaar, they came and we contributed some of the bazaar items to the family. And there was a little girl of three years old, got, I heard that, a teddy bear and she just loved it. Can you imagine that? Now, what happens now is that the family who lives in Pittsburgh must leave their house at the end of December. There's no place for them to go. And the father, who is in 30 years old, civil engineer, cannot work because the, he is applying for the refugee status, but the process has not been contributed, completed so that he cannot work. That means he cannot buy anything. And so he needs, they really need help from us. And I hope we can do something more as we can. Thank you very much.
and my heart and all the fields and all the meadows wide Be sure you count should I forget tell this and my heart and all the bees which in the clover We now have the opportunity to give to the ministry of Northbury as we sing Be Thou My Vision in the silver hymnal number 20. Spirit of life, spirit of hope, of peace, of justice. You call us into life, and we know that life comes with beautiful joy and agonizingly painful sorrow. <coughs> and our prayer is that there may be strength to navigate all that life brings. We pray for those people who now are suffering in the midst of war and violence, dealing with sorrow and pain beyond what they could imagine, beyond what we can imagine. May peace come. And may people be able to reach out to each other, to comfort each other, to offer each other refuge even in the midst of what is most horrific. And may we who are separated by distance and culture and country from those places, may we understand that we are called to generosity, to support through love and prayer and material gifts. And may we come to understand that our stewardship, our capacity to give, our capacity for generosity is part of the healing of the world part of our responsibility, part
part of what we are called to do in the midst of our own lives. May we see more clearly the ways that our lives invite us to generosity. And may we have the courage to give generously in those times and places where we see that is our calling. And may we join with others, knowing that we are not alone as we respond to the needs of the world, that we are a community of people, of spiritual beings, <coughs> who know that part of our identity is tied to our capacity to give and to share. May we enter into that space with joy, with courage, with strength. For we pray in your many names. Amen. A very strange, enchanted boy. They say he wandered very far, very far, over land and sea. A little shy. And sad of I, but very wise was he. And then one day, one magic day, he passed my way. And while we spoke of many things, fools and kings, this he said to me. The greatest thing you'll ever is just to love and be loved in return. The greatest thing is just to love and be loved in The readings for today are found on the back of your bulletin. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. Rabin Dranath Tagore. Once a person had awakened, the Buddha often instructed him or her to go out to benefit others, to be of service. Service can be seen as an act of generosity, so the Buddhist path begins and ends with this virtue. Tricycle, the Buddhist review. 
Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 1 Peter 4.10. Please join me in prayer. May our hearts be opened to the deeper truths of what it is to be able to be of service, to give, to be a refuge for others. May it be so. Amen. Stewardship. We often begin to talk about stewardship by talking about what we give, which is important. Thank you for what you have given. But I'd like to go back to before the giving, to the receiving, because I think stewardship actually begins with our awareness that we have been gifted and that the most basic gift we have received is the gift of life itself. And that how we use that gift and how we share that gift, how we understand that gift, is really key to how we understand our lives. So to tell you a Buddhist story about a turtle that talks about how incredible it is that we've been born into a human life. So the story goes, and there are variations of this story within different Buddhist traditions, but this is one variation. So imagine with me that there is a turtle, a unique mythological magical turtle, who lives in the bottom of the ocean. And this turtle, who lives in the very bottom of the ocean, every 1,000 years comes to the surface of the ocean for one breath, and then goes back down into the bottom of the ocean. In this same ocean, there is a piece of wood floating that has a hole in it that is just big enough for the turtle's head to come through. This piece of wood is floating in the ocean, tossed by the waves, tossed by the wind. So you have the turtle in the bottom of the ocean, you have this floating piece of wood with a circle in it. The chances of being born a human being are the same chances that this turtle, which comes up for air, once every thousand years would be able to go through the hole in the piece of wood which is floating over the top of the ocean. So the odds, according to this Buddhist story of being born into a human life, are incredible. So the very fact that we are alive as humans is extraordinary. The other night I was looking out the window and saw Orion's belt, the three stars that come into view at this time of year in the northern hemisphere. And I had that same feeling that we are just this incredible speck of Earth in a universe beyond our comprehension and that we have lives and bodies and consciousness and the capacity to love is an extraordinary, miraculous gift in the midst of this vast, unfathomable universe. And if we can begin our understanding of stewardship with this awesome reality that we are alive and each of us is gifted in our aliveness, 
And that as spiritual beings, part of that vibrancy, part of our aliveness is defined by how we are able to be generous, how we are able to find ways to share our giftedness with other people. Often in this culture, we tend to think of our gifts as our gifts. They're ours. There's this sense of we have earned it, we own it, it's ours. But this is a radical redefinition of giftedness, and it, it's a way to understand our giftedness, not just in terms of the ways that we are unique or special or different from others, but as our capacity to gift others, that our giftedness doesn't come just to us, our giftedness comes to us on behalf of others. And we need each other. Because we're gifted in different ways. But to understand this, this what I think is really fundamental to our identity as spiritual beings, fundamental to our understanding of stewardship, is to see that all that we have, there's that old hymn that maybe some of you are familiar with, all that we have is thine alone, O God, from thee. All that we are, all that we have become, all that we will continue to be is gift. And we don't often think of ourselves that way. We don't often think of our lives that way. We wake up, wake up in the morning and just start going. But if we wake up each day with the reality that each moment of our lives is truly given to us, then our understanding of our capacity to give is totally transformed. And we understand that it is part of our responsibility, the way that the Buddha is described, that once a person comes to spiritual awareness, the Buddha instructed those people to go out and benefit others, be of service. Service is seen as an act of generosity a way that we engage our own hearts and the rest of the world. And often we discover this when we ourselves are in places of difficulty or we know other people who are in places of difficulty. And in 2 Corinthians, the words are very clear. God, spirit, mystery, infinite, however you want to name the sacred. In 2 Corinthians, it, it reads, God helps us in all of our troubles so that we are able to help others who have all kinds of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from spirit. And so as we recognize ourselves as gifted, then we also see that we are part of this amazing cycle of being able to also give. And then we arrive at places like acknowledging the Afghan family. And as Jay said in the meditation group, often we pray for peace, not only in Ukraine, but also in Gaza and Israel and in Afghanistan. And in many ways, the 12-year war in Afghanistan is moved into history, moved into memory. There are more current wars that we're concerned about. But we were in Afghanistan for 20 years. And there were people who lived in Afghanistan who worked with European and American forces who, as we know, were in jeopardy as we withdrew. And the three people that you bought food for are three of those people. They fled for their lives. They're now in a, in a, a legal, legal limbo land. It's not clear what's going to happen to them. And they are part now of what I consider our stewardship. They are part of our understanding of our generosity 
part of the circle that becomes part of our responsibility. They came here yesterday, the three of them. And I missed them the first time they were here and they came back later, they were in their car. And I went out to introduce myself to them. And the three-year-old girl was in the back seat, in a car seat, and she was clutching the teddy bear that she had gotten at the bazaar. And it was a huge teddy bear. She's three years old and the teddy bear was almost as big as she was. Big, brown, fluffy teddy bear. And as she held it, I looked at that three-year-old girl and thought, what has she been through already? And what is her life going to be? And how much support she's going to need to be able to grow and mature into a beautiful young woman. And part of that support is on this table. I bet you the Twix is going to be a favorite. <laughs> but the tuna will also help. <laughs> And her parents, the trauma that they've gone through, to, to be forced to leave your country, to be terrified that you will be targeted and killed and have a small child. I mean, it's hard enough to raise a small child in a country that's at peace, but to have a small child, to, to be aware of the vulnerability of that child, and to be aware as adults that they are vulnerable, that they're completely dependent now upon people to help them. They cannot work legally. And that happened very suddenly for them. I mean, the, we all know the US withdrawing from Afghanistan was, the word is messy. It was not smooth and people were in jeopardy in ways that they hadn't anticipated being and were abruptly having to leave their lives and flee. And so we intersect with this 20-year war on this Sunday with this food. We prayed for peace for Afghanistan. And here we demonstrate in tangible ways our prayer for peace. And I think in terms of stewardship, it's important to be able to do both. But the prayer that happens every Monday in meditation for peace is a very powerful gift to the people of Afghanistan who are still struggling, will struggle for probably decades, the people in Ukraine, the people in Israel and Gaza now, that prayer is potent and part of our stewardship, part of what we give, part of the service we offer to the larger world where there is danger and violence and people are struggling. And sometimes prayer feels like it's not enough. When people say, I'm offering you, my thoughts and prayers, people say, you know, give me something concrete. But I think that we need to value thoughts and prayers as powerful, potent gifts, a way of becoming part of the web of compassion that actually sustains this world. And also to know that we need to give practical, material things as part of our stewardship also. And that together, those two ways of giving, two ways of understanding stewardship, when they come together, they become this extraordinary way that our community and other communities can actually make a difference. It's only three people right now. There were thousands and thousands of people who left Afghanistan in fear for their lives. But three people will have tuna and Twix. And that makes a difference. And a three-year-old girl went to bed last night, I bet you anything, hugging a teddy bear that she got from Haverhall. It's stewardship. It's basic, it's powerful, and it's what we do as North Bray. Amen.
Our closing hymn is in the green hymnal, number 266, This Little Light of Mine. If you are able, please rise as we sing about the ways that our light shines across the world. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go. All around the world, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the world, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the world, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. That about says it. <laughs> let it shine. <laughs> all around the world. Go in peace, knowing that you are sources of light and generosity and compassion, and that who you are as you give transforms the world. Amen. Say my peace on